Jazz. It is a show where Allison gives us a topic. Gary and I try to talk about the topic without knowing it beforehand. Hijinks ensue. I am Chris, jazz sequence on the internet. That is Gary, binary Gary on the internet. This is Allison, Allison Plus on the internet. And we're back from a brief hiatus. And hello. Why, hello there. The topic today is hiatus. <laughs> The root is of hiatus no. is hiate, which means to rest. No, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I believe that. <laughs> yeah, that did I sound awfully, uh, awfully legit. From the Greek root, hiat? No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so um, how y'all been? Yeah. It's a good question. I did like that Gary and I had the same, like, we're starting the podcast dance. <laughs> that, of course, anyone listening to the podcast would not see. Yeah. It's the only dance in my repertoire, so I'm glad we, we match up there. It's good choreography. It's good basic, back to basic choreography. Yeah. Um, it's like the, the white dude running man dance, right? Like, just move your arms back and forth. That's about it. Find the beat, if you can. And if not, smile like you're having a good time. Yeah. The smile makes it. Truth. Um, my hiatus was lovely. I don't know. Is it a hiatus? I don't know. <laughs> well, sort of a hiatus. It's been a couple weeks for us. It's been one week for the show. It's a hiatus. It's a That's break. How does that work? Did we have that time for We mm -hmm. did. Yeah. Oh, huh. That's neat. I've wanted to ever since I watched Sliders, which is not quite time travel, but mm. close I'm enough. for lunch. Sliders. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I Actually, was just like, you want time travel? <laughs> you can just have lunch whenever you want, because you're a grown-up. <laughs> I'm going to, as soon as we're done filming this. Filming this? Are you running film over there, Chris? Yes. <laughs> um, as soon as we're done filming this, I'm going to bust out some leftover tacos. Mm. understand that concept leftover tacos so i went to uh disneyland and then universal studios and uh the beach and and hit vegas on the way out and on the way back and saw the beatles love cirque du soleil show on uh on tuesday night Ooh, how was that oh it was pretty freaking amazing yeah. yeah, I was really impressed. I usually like Cirque du Soleil does like electronic, quasi new agey kind of music like to their stuff, and it's always really good and it goes with their stuff. So I was really wondering how like contemporary like Beatles would like go with that sort of thing. No, it was awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I've seen Love twice. Um, yeah, amazing show. Yeah, it, we realized afterwards that you kind of have to see it more than once to be able to catch all the things. Because there's just so much going on and, and so much of it. There, there are several like licks of music that I hear now, like Beatles music, obviously, and like immediately in my head, I'm I'm right back there. It's hmm. it's impressive. Yeah. yeah. I've well, never actually seen a new show sponsor. New show sponsor. Well, that's sponsor cool. Allison to go see a Cirque du Soleil show. Yeah. Never yeah. Seen. You really, you you should you should see one. Feel like it's my jam <laughs> but it is it would be your jam not, yeah and how was disneyland it was disneyland um yeah. i got to do so we went last year with my dad and this year we went with my dad and my mom um because she didn't get a chance to go last year so um we did a lot of the stuff that we didn't get a chance to do last year um and we did some of the things that we did do last year that we really liked um and that was cool um we tried to we tried to get as much done in one day as possible because um me and aaron and the kids really wanted to go to universal to go to harry potter wizarding world um that was like our 
priority. Um, and so we didn't do like the two days at Disneyland because two days at Disneyland and then Harry Potter would be ridiculous and also expensive. Um, so, so yeah, so we did and ridiculously expensive and ridiculously expensive. And instead we spent a crap ton of money at universal. Um, but I feel like that actually, involves like wands, butter beer, like you gotta go down yep, that. Yep. Yep. Of yeah. sometimes, otherwise why? <laughs> yeah. No, oh. was all of those things. Yeah, we, we did not get the robes and we did not get like full scarves from all the houses like we thought we might. Um, mostly because um, like, as we do want house scarves, um, we have a scarf wall now upstairs um, for, for our soccer scarves and wanted to put Harry Potter scarves on there too. But we realized that their, their scarves, they're selling like 40 bucks or something. Um, and you could get Harry Potter scarves that are different, but still good uh, for like 20, 25 bucks on Amazon. So, so we'll get them, just not, not the Universal Studios. But we did get, um, we did get a Quidditch board game, which Ooh. is only available at Universal. Um, and we played it, and it plays a lot like, sort of like a cross between chess and um, like uh, Stratego, I guess. Um, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry and I are like, huh. Okay. It's, it's really it's it's really I know one of those words. <laughs> it's it's um it's uh only two players, so it's a little bit um that that part's disappointing because um we can't all play at once. But um yeah, it you move like little uh tokens across the board uh that represent different uh quidditch players. Um, and there's a quaffle piece and we can knock the person carrying the quaffle off the board and, and take the quaffle. And then there's cards that give you additional plays and, and the chasers are really fast. So they're really hard to catch the, and they're, but they can only move diagonally. Uh, and the beaters can, can only move two spaces at a time, but they move like straight and straight lines. Um, so it's, 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 you're always going to get outmaneuvered, but you can kind of try to position yourself to to block the chasers. And yeah, it's really interesting. There's a lot of like planning and strategy involved, which is kind of cool. And it actually, I was surprised how much like the actual game of Quidditch it kind of plays in terms of like scoring and in terms of how like your tactics would work and how um, like how the chasers are basically unbeatable. Um, and how like and the snitch is involved too. This obviously the, the snitch appears and the, the the seekers catch the snitch and then the game is over. But the snitch almost never appears. And when the snitch does appear, you have like a very slim chance of actually catching it. Um, mm -hmm. And that plays into the game too. So it's it actually really um, surprisingly legit as far as like accuracy. Minus like the flying portion. Minus the flying portion. Always. Obviously. That's the part I. I mean I. I don't care about the rest of it. I just want to fly. <laughs> now, is this too personal of a question? But like, what how's like what scarves would all your family, like who? Everyone went diehard Whoa. Ravenclaw. Really? <laughs> like hardcore. Like I thought. I thought at least. Um, I thought at least my my son uh, was would go in with uh, with Gryffindor. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I got so I got my Harry Potter Quidditch jersey. Um, <laughs> So I, I'm repping Gryffindor, but everyone else went hardcore Ravenclaw. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I think it has a lot to do with, with uh, I think, the fact that, well, the, the, the wisdom thing, obviously, was because that's their sort of house sentiment, I guess. But also um, the fact that uh, Luna Love is from Ravenclaw, um, yeah. and she's a, a popular uh, Ravenclaw. I hear that. Uh, alum in this house. Yeah, I can see that. She's, yeah, you can't. You just can't argue with Lou. <laughs> yeah, you literally. Because if you do, she'll just like say some wacky thing, and you'll be like completely speechless. Yeah, exactly. You're like, oh, yeah, good point. Sure. <laughs> sure. Put her away. <laughs> <sighs> So yeah, that was my that was my hiatus. And wait, Star Wars Land isn't open yet. No. Is it? No. That's like No, they they were people were talking about it and looked like they were building stuff, but but no, it's not. Because it's that they're shutting down Toontown? Is that I love uh, that like, that's these are the things I know. 
That's that's what I've heard. We didn't go to Toontown last year, and we didn't go to Toontown this year. And I have no like I don't care at all about Toontown. I cared about Toontown when I when Roger Rabbit was a thing, and that's a very long time ago. They're all they also shut down a Bugs Life World in California Adventure Park, um, and I think that they're building like an Avengers Land there. Oh. Um, there's like they're like Stark Industries uh, signs on the on you know the wall that they put up to block you from seeing what they're doing <laughs> they're like don't look behind the curtain right exactly i love that i have just enough weird disneyland news i'm like oh yeah this is a thing that's happening i'm like why do i know these i know why i know these things but still wow you guys just drank in unison for the listeners of the show <laughs> Are you, Allison, are you in the center on your screen up top? No, I'm in the, oh. upper, like a triangle. Yeah, so like, and yeah. that's, oh. Right. I have a different view. I have like a little, like, film strip up top and then whoever's talking in the bottom. But I was hoping yeah. if we were on either side, not only did we drink in unison, but we did it in stereo. <laughs> Just like, well, it will be, because the way it records, uh, Gary and I are on top. And Alice is on the bottom, and it always ends up that way, no matter who joins first. I think, which is interesting. But anyway, uh, it's so clearly it'll be, alphabetical. Yes, so it'll be stereo for the viewers who subscribe to our channel on YouTube, our channel that doesn't have a name because we don't have enough subscribers. Hint. Shaking my. Okay, head. I'll subscribe. Goodness sakes, I've been meaning to get around to it. Okay. <laughs> Let me, set, let me set a reminder in Slack for myself. These are the things that excellent so you sub sub Subscribe and then immediately. Uh, subscribe and then immediately uh, like to say that you do not want any email notifications and then you're fine. Yeah. Okay, it will remind me on Monday if I don't do it before then. Oh, it'll remind me anyway. Well, we can remind you. You don't even yeah, need to. Yeah, we can totally. Do. We'll be your reminders. New technology. Gary, have you subscribed yet? No, I'm in the middle of a podcast. I'll get to it after this. <laughs> You're in the middle of a podcast, but yet you can get use. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get some more in a second. It's good. It's cold here today, y'all. How cold is it? Uh, Balmy 75, Gary. Yeah. You're so still I'm wearing a t-shirt, and I'm guessing shorts, shorts. so. Uh, that's I why I thought from the chest up. Um, yeah, definitely shorts. I went outside without shoes on, as I always do. Um, I think it was, the concrete was chilly. It's like, it was below 70 last night. So <laughs> I'm bidding, bidding adieu to summer, sadly. I just, man. We left, oh, uh, wow. we left the, we left sunny California where it was mid to high 70s and got to uh, Las Vegas where it was like mm, low 80s and got to Utah where it's like <clears throat> 50. That's have I told you about my um in Celsius ten? Yeah, mm. that's the only crossover point I know. <laughs> like fifty ten. <laughs> <laughs> We're at like ten now as well, and it's going to go down further for the rest of the week. Yeah. But yesterday and the day before, it was like. I don't know. Have I told you about my my trade show trip to um, Las Vegas and Reno in late October years ago? Probably not. This is silly. This is just like how Gary works. I'm going to Vegas end of October. Look at the weather. It's like 80. It's awesome. So I did this, this trade show in Vegas. I had to fly directly from that one to Reno. Fly to Reno. I get off. It is freezing. Literally 32 degrees. And I'm wearing like a polo shirt and khaki pants. OMG. Didn't realize that Reno, higher elevation, further north, would be a different temperature than Las Vegas. And it was freaking cold for three days. That's a very different climate. I look like an idiot. I mean, everybody's walking in and taking off their jackets and stuff. And I, I bought a flimsy jacket at Walmart. That's all I could find. And shivering everywhere. Shivering. Oh. I've yeah, done we a couple were... times traveling. Where I, I, my first destination in the south, and then I go north. I don't plan for the northern leg of the trip. Hmm. Did that, yeah. We're actually thinking about um, the holidays and can, and debating whether we want to drive to California to see my parents or to drive um, to Lakewood, uh, 
Washington to see Aaron's family. Probably we're going to go up to Washington, but the the real like the the difference is the Blue Mountains in Oregon versus uh, Donner Pass in uh, Nevada, California. Um, both of them are pretty horrible. Um, I think I think that Donner Pass beats Blue Mountains, but Oregon is really bad with snow. Like they don't understand snow and how it works and how you deal with it, uh, because typically. Uh, in states that experience snow, uh, you put the salt on the snow to melt the snow while it, like even if it is snowing, you, you do that and you, and you shovel the snow while it is snowing to get it off the road. This is a thing that states that understand how snow works do. Oregon says, nah, fuck it. And when they wait until it stops snowing, to do anything at all about it. So by that point, the snow has now packed into a solid level of ice. Meanwhile, you're driving on ice for, I don't know how long, quite long in some cases. Uh, and maybe you don't know this, but ice does not have a lot of traction. And you kind of go Wee! all up and down the mountain, which is fun. Before we record the first episode of the show, I did my first like long distance trip in snow. I caught a freak snowstorm on the way up to Georgia and um, I was like laying in bed and every time like the bed shook, Rhonda moved, I thought I was sliding off the road again. Mm. It was, yeah. Driving, driving in those conditions is so unnerving, especially when you know that no one's dealt with the road conditions on your I, path. I, I, I said, what idiot drives in this weather? Like, I got this, a ticket. I got a ticket. I don't know better <laughs> I got a ticket in Oregon, not for driving too fast or driving recklessly, but for driving too slow because it was snowing and there was, and we were in the fast lane because that was the one that had like, you know, the tire marks. So you could kind of get a little bit more traction. So we we're driving there, but I didn't have, um, the, our tires were not very good and I didn't have chains. So we were driving slow so we wouldn't slide off the road. And I didn't want to go over because then we'd definitely slide up. I got a ticket for going too slow. Oh, that's ridiculous. And of, all the, of all the, I would just, yeah, I'd just take the, t and be like, yeah, I'm being yeah. safe. Like, screw uh -huh. you. Yeah, I'll, t I'll take that. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm what trying not to die. die. Whether, what officer that weather is like, yeah, I'm pulling people over. <laughs> Come on. It's, so, it's like very totally like a, a quota situation at that point. I mean, he said it was, it was, it was essentially like uh, blocking traffic because I was going slower than, than what other people could be going. But. Yeah, but like, I get it, but also people can go around you, really, if they're that much more confident. Yeah, I mean, if, if you don't want people going around us or in the snow lane, I don't want to drive in the snow lane either. Yeah, you just want to drive, you just want to get to your destination safely. <laughs> So like clear the other lane, right? Yeah, yeah. So so here's the, the solution question. to this problem is plow your damn roads, Oregon. Yeah, come on. Would time travel be more valuable to you, or would like the ability to like materialize anywhere you need to be be more useful? All I want is an app that will tell me what the road conditions are across my journey with that is time uh, delayed so that if the conditions change, it tells me in advance so that I know when I'm driving into a snowstorm. That's all I want. It seems to me that Google, the Google Maps app ought to be able to do that. They, they tell it me all the should. damn time, like, oh, it I should. found a better route. Yeah, better. It's, all it's it, better. yeah, you need to, you need to come, you need, I had a friend, um, one of my coworkers uh, try to like do a, like a react, a thing in react. And he basically, it's basically like cross uh, Google maps with uh, dark sky um, forecast at IO uh, and use their, their API to get the, the weather forecast and, and, um, and do that along the points of a, of a Google map route. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah, it, it, was, it was sort of a prototype and it wasn't like fully fleshed out, but I, I saw the prototype and was like, yeah, I'll, that is the thing that I want. That's, that is the knowledge I want to have. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. To answer your original question, Gary, I would want to be able to just transport myself rather than lose time, potentially. I don't want to skip time, although I think I do a lot, but I don't think I actually do. <laughs> uh, time travel goes both ways like how cool would it be to go back in time 
Well, for some people, it'd be more desirable. I feel like I'm losing enough rights in my own time. I don't need to go back. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know that I would go back to to spend a lot of time in certain times, right? I mean, it'd be would cool, you want to cool interact to with yourself? Like, would you? No, try to... <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, 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 nope. no, go... no, 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 no. I want to go back. I want to watch um, the Apollo <laughs> 11 launch, right? I want to go back and I want to see. Um, it's all space-based uh, again. It is, totally is, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to go much, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Okay, so you're not, you don't want to go back hundreds and hundreds of years or thousands of years. You just want to go back to see some like peak historical moments and like be a part of the like, experience, the actual experience. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, I say I wouldn't want to interact with myself, but I would probably want to relive certain moments in my life. So I guess that would be a problem, wouldn't it? That's, yeah, that's a difficult proposition. But wait, why? So you said Apollo 11? Yeah. Why, why Apollo 11 in particular? Because that's the one that they've landed on. Well, I, I know that, Gary, but like, <laughs> there's a lot of, <laughs> like, other than the fact that it's... The first. The first. Not even the first. I mean, the first... Oh. Moon landing. It's yeah. the landing. Yeah. Yeah. We're done now. We don't need to go back. <laughs> but like, why that and not any other? Like the first yeah. rocket launch or something. Yeah. Oh, I know. Mean, just look out of the air. I would. I would want to watch the the first landing of the space shuttle, right? Yeah. Um, in the uh, dry lake bed, like the was it the Enterprise? The I don't know. I'd like to watch. I mean, there's a lot of yes, the USS yes. Enterprise. Yeah, I it was, was like, really? <laughs> no, Google it with the space. I think the first mock-up was the Enterprise. I think the one that they landed that was that was flyable without rocket engines was called. Dang, I'll have to, I'll have to remember it since the show's over. Really, I I wouldn't have thought that they would have named it something like Dang. Dang. Yeah, <laughs> Dang. The USS, USS Dang. dang. <laughs> <laughs> Did you all see the Soyuz news yesterday? No, I read about Soyuz it. Launch? Watch any of it. I've had like the NASA channel on live since the launch yesterday. Since I got up. Um, I mean, it's I super exciting that two humans almost made it to space and didn't and didn't die. Like, pretty fantastic. I, I was very impressed. I'm always very impressed by how calm the the vocal overlay is, where they're like, "Well, we're gonna have to cancel this. Seems like uh, something exploded." <laughs> <laughs> Two people, two of the astronauts are unknown whereabouts, but um, we're gonna track it down, get back to you on that. Like the tone is just so like, and meanwhile, I know that like in the actual control room, like stuff is happening, but the, the voice that they had overlaid was just like, I'm sure it'll all sort itself out. It's just this very like- my... more I can't be a conventional astronaut, right? No. Like I, I freaked out last night over some versioning issues and a composer thing on PHP. I'm like in a total panic. Like, I it's gonna load the long JavaScript and... library. Yeah, I mean, it's not like, there's nobody's lives at risk here. <laughs> lives are at risk, I, like, he's frozen. He's not, he's not doing anything. He's broken. <laughs> Just that um, I don't, I don't want to derail this conversation, um, but typically in this show, we have a topic. <laughs> have a topic. Yeah. Uh, well, at this point, it's the least of the topic. <laughs> no, there's so never. We, a so now that we're so far in, do we want to like skip the topic? Do we no. To we do it justice. We're gonna do a, okay. gonna do a topic. No, the we're topic. The topic is nanopution. 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 These little fusions. <laughs> well, obviously, nanopution comes fusions. from the, comes from the fictional uh, land of Lilliputia and mm -hmm. Lilliputians, which are very small people. So Nanoputians are, ex are small people, but they're very, 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 they're nano, they're <laughs> nano sized. It's Putians all the way down. <laughs> people. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> have you both actually read that book? No. <laughs> I, I know about that book. The reason Everyone's why I know about that him. book, the reason why I was knowing, I know about that, that the Lilliputians is from, the uh, flash game I used to play when I worked in a call center, uh, which had a, a section of the world uh, that you could explore and, and fight monsters and stuff that was in the land of Lilliputians or something. 
I, I figured it was a reference, and then later I learned that it was a reference to some fictional thing, but no, I have not actually read about Lilliputians. But that's I what have, Nanoputians uh, are. Go ahead. <laughs> are they, um, are they, uh, what's the gig on those Lilliputians? They're, they're, they're like a supporting role in a book about something else, right? <laughs> I yeah. had to read Gulliver's Travels for school at that point. Um, yeah, Gulliver, that's the guy. Gulliver, <laughs> Gulliver that's our main man. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly who I was thinking of. <laughs> um, I don't remember whether it was high school or university, but it might be worth a reread, but probably not. Is I mean, it worth a read? I mean, so a lot of those books that you have to read in, in school are like, eh. I mean, I get the historical significance, but the book, eh. Yeah, I've got enough on my to read list as it is that I don't think I need to probably revisit it. Um, but just me, just my preference. Can you can you spell Nanoputian? Yeah, N A N O P U T I A N. It's totally very small people. Can you spell Lilliputian? L I L I P U T I A N. Is it P U T I A N? I believe so. Yeah, I think so. Okay. You're like, otherwise it would not be related to Nanoputian, and clearly it's, it is. It's clearly related to Nanoputian. So, so, okay, Lilliputians are already small, and they're people, so Nanoputians are micro, like, nanoscopic so, organisms. The is thing is, like, you're, not, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> is it a story, though, that has, rec like, recursion in the story? Like, they're reading a story about themselves? Like, it's, no. it is. It's a recursive story. Is it? Uh, yeah. Yep. Gulliver's Travels? Yes. Yes. Right. <laughs> I don't know that to be true. So I'm going to go along with this. I say it confidently, though. Right? That's what this show is all about. Confidence. <laughs> oh, man. God. <laughs> Just entering in. Get in there. Get in there with those ideas about Lilliputians and Nanoputians. So, so... I, see, I would like to visit the land of Nanoputia, <laughs> where the Nanoputians come from. Where they are. Because, yeah, where they are currently, right now, today. Uh, because I'm sure that their civilization is very interesting. I think so. I think we, we're there now, maybe? We could be? <laughs> could be a thing? I'm not sure. Absolutely. <laughs> This was one of those topics that- Watch out, Gary, there's a giant finger. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's very Monty Python. <laughs> <laughs> I'm clutching your head. <laughs> yeah. Who's that? That's- um. Kids in the Hall? That's the one. Gosh, I used to watch so much Kids in the Hall in college. I was gonna say every child under 12. Yeah, and also every child under 12. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I went down a really good kids in the hall rabbit hole the other day on YouTube. It was very pleasant. But then it, it then converged with um, my partner's like childhood Canadian TV show rabbit hole, which was very bizarre. Um, the show's not called rabbit hole, is it? No, no. It was just so many weird, like, and I have the same weird childhood TV shows, but the Canadian versions were very, very, there was a lot of um, very low budget. There was oh, also like, yeah. there was a skit show called something like Kayak Head or I don't know. Basically something That's happened. That's very Canadian. It's, there's nothing more Canadian than this. Basically he, they're, they're portaging with a kayak and he gets struck by lightning and then his head gets fused with the kayak was my understanding. Um, <laughs> and then he fights crime. Um, so yeah, there was a lot of attached to his head. Yeah. What choice do you have at that point? A lot. Being honest about things. Um, fighting. Uh, wow. Canadian. How do you put on your costume if you have a kayak <laughs> attached to your head? The commitment. I mean, I guess you have to like put a zipper down the back of all of your shirts. Maybe, but no. he, only wear buttons. Like, he became this. Seemed like the kayak itself was kind of the thing at that point. Was that that was, he didn't need an outfit because the 
because the kayak was the option. The kayak is always there. If you have a yeah, kayak, I guess, I guess if you live in Canada, Canada you're, I guess, you're, decent exposure. I guess, also, if you, I guess if you live in Canada, you're always wearing flannel shirts anyway. So that's what, those are typically buttoned up. Just the entity of it all. Yeah. What? what? We're down to 10 minutes already. <laughs> and you have no idea what the topic is. We just. It's, it's a microscopic, nanoscopic people. You know, actually, yeah. So. <laughs> Harry doesn't even have a comment about the nanoscopic people. He's just completely dumb. No, I totally agree. It's tiny people. I mean, it's little you're, you're not incorrect, though. That's the. That's the great part about it. <laughs> That's the sad part. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, I look at the disappointment shouldn't read on my face or in my voice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, nanopecians, they're organic molecules whose, like, when you look at the structural formula, they look like people. That's what nanopecians are. Oh. Are. So like when you like look at like, so if you were to look and break down like serotonin and it's that little like weird pattern for our visual listeners, I'm like drawing things with my finger. <laughs> but um, a serotonin shape pattern, yeah. Well, yeah, it looks like, I mean, I'm, it's a visual thing, but like anyway, these ones look like people. So there's like the head and the arms and the, and the whatnot. And, and the, the whatnot. whatnot. The legs. Like are we just, are we talking about the whatnot now on this show? Are we are we getting our R rating to talk about whatnots? All the whatnots, the benzene rings, the carbon atoms. Pure excitement. I'm getting sexy. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> sexier than nanocubes. No. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> well, I'm that's a little cool. disappointed that it's not actually tiny people. Well, they. I am a little relieved that it's not tiny people. It's used for educational purposes. And they kind of look adorable. <laughs> or evil, depending on like how you color what, code. What kind of face you draw on them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, it is a portmanteau as well between um, Nanometer and Lilliputian from Gulliver's Travels. So. You're not that makes it cute. And who doesn't love a good portmanteau? Yeah. yeah. So for once, I don't know if it's the only time, but one of the few times on this show where we have broken down the word and uh, discovered the actual meaning of, the, meaning, yeah. of yeah. the topic by breaking down the word. Perfect. What, what <laughs> Allison was impressed. betting on is the fact that neither of us knew anything about Gulliver, Gulliver's Travels or Lilliputians. It's true. Which was a safe guess. This is accurate, actually. Because <laughs> yeah. I read it. Yeah. It's uh, just some roundabout way that I actually knew what a little Lilliputian was. If I didn't make some assumptions, then this show would not. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't have so, uh, listener questions. Please, listeners, send us questions. Um, and I think that since we've uh, taken a break from it a couple of times, uh, we should do some actual questions anyway. Uh, we, so we have a backstock of Allison questions. Uh, so we're going to hit those, I think, in the remaining six and a half minutes. Um, oh, there's a new one. I didn't even notice. Maybe it's not new. It's from September, but I, didn't, I don't think I saw it. Uh, we're going to go with one that's on top, uh, which is uh, Allison asks. Allison, that Allison right there. Uh, asks, if you had an extra $100 to spend on yourself every week, what would you do? I think, I think what I would do. Uh, and legitimate, legitimately spend on yourself, not like, like self-care or something, not like, don't be all charitable. And that's a different question. <laughs> I, I think, I think $100, I would um, like one night a week go to a fairly decent restaurant of some variety with the band. Like we do that kind of anyway, like once a month, uh, but I would just make it a weekly thing. And then mm -hmm. the rest of the week be like fasting, basically. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, That's exactly where I was headed with it too. Uh, same, same thought, you know, like some kind of entertainment with the family. Yeah. yeah. Okay. If I... Yeah. 
Is there a particular food or meal or place that you already have? Like, you would be like, oh, that restaurant we would go to more often, or you would mix it up? No, variety is the spice of life. Yeah, totally. Be different every time. Yeah, and the thing, the thing about just, like, throw the arm, right. And the thing about doing it, having having that every week to do would mean that we'd be able to, like what we do now is we rotate, each person picks a place uh, and we rotate between the four of us. So every month it's somebody else is picking that restaurant for that month. Um, so if we did it every week, then we could rotate, go through the rotation quicker and that way we could like explore new places that we haven't tried more frequently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Is there ever any fear that you'll regret the choice and is there any ever like guilt about being like, oh, we tried this new thing and it did not pan out? Nah, it's part of the experience, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I mean, to well, we won't come back, but I mean, we share some laughs together, and I mean, the food's never like inedible, but maybe certain courses are. Yeah, you know, it just, or it just it's, it's yeah, fine. It. It's fine, but it wouldn't be a repeat visit. Yeah. As as a yeah. gluten, as a gluten free vegan. Uh, our choices are already limited, and if we do accidentally hit something that is crappy, then it is kind of disappointing or has fewer options, and that's disappointing. We typically don't like. I mean, typically, what we like, what Aaron and I will do is is pick, you know, the vegan places that we've heard about or that we know or whatever, um, and the kids pick the places that they know that they remember, um, and so we don't usually hit that. But if we did hit that. Um, then yeah, it's it's a little disappointing. We've we've been disappointed by going out to restaurants before, particularly in other places where we're say we're like read reviews or whatever, and it was like this is the best vegan place in Nashville, for instance. And we went there and it was like, hmm, this is kind of uh, not so great. And the kids didn't like it. And that's usually that's usually the the, the thing is like if the kids give it a, a hard no, then then it kind of like well they're gonna be hungry tonight, and that's sorry. And that's a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, too, in your case, like there's there's greater risk, you know. Yeah. I mean, like if you eat you eat gluten, you know, you're going to have issues, right? Mm -hmm. um, you you eat food that's they claim is vegan and it's not. You know, if it's the first time you've eaten meat or something something made with meat in in years, you're gonna have problems. I mean, it's mm -hmm. you know, so the risk for you is much greater than for me. I mean, I I go somewhere and it's it's crappy, it's just crappy. <laughs> it's just plain old crappy, <laughs> 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 which is still not enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I had this uh went to this German place years ago and I had some sausage that made me ill, like Ew. lay on the bathroom floor oh, the entire no. weekend. Like, I might die here. <laughs> <laughs> what was in that sausage? That's that's the that's not just like a mediocre experience of a no repeat. That's a maybe we should file with the health board sort of situation. <laughs> That place, I've actually been back there since then. They oh, have, um, well, they, I'll explain to you why. So they moved from the location they were in um, and they, got, they brought in a new chef and the chef they brought in, um, I happen to know from his mother stuff. So, well, so talking with him, he's like, he's like, they were just lazy, you know? He's like, I, you know, I asked this guy to clean. He said, no, I fired him. He's like, so after I fired like five people, they knew I was serious about cleaning constantly. Well, that's been why I got sick, right? Um, but he's a great chef and the place is, I don't ever want to frequent a place that they were just like, we were kind of just like, eh, I'm cleaning. <laughs> well, he, he's, the, he's the new chef and, and clean house on the old staff. I just, yeah, there's a certain amount of illness that even if someone, they bring in new people, it's still not good enough. Like, I'm just sorry. Sometimes, sometimes bridges are burned and you leave those, you leave those places. <laughs> You're just like, I want my German food experience. There's not, as you imagine in Jackson, yeah. there's no options for German food. That's, and maybe there's a reason. Maybe they need to, <laughs> maybe they need to run a tighter cleanliness ship. <laughs> like, and I would, I would 100% recommend the place now. I think it's fantastic. At this wow. Well, where good. it was previously. I mean, I just took a good five or six years off when I got sick. <laughs> like, well, yeah, because that's horrible. So that's for almost killing me five or six years just in case you need reference i can and picture that yelp review roller coaster ride of <laughs> are you are either of you yelpers do you yelp i used uh, to a lot but i, I yeah. stopped i should start again i guess i i 
look at Yelp for reviews, but I have not written very Oh, much. man, this is a topic in and of itself. I am so emphatically anti-Yelp. Wow. I used to be Yelp elite. That's where yeah. I like, Yeah. But I, I do like doing it if I have a really great experience with like a small business in my neighborhood. I, I keep trying to remember. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.